Happy Monday here on WCLU. They're always happy. Uh, made a little bit better by the fact that Sam Terry and I get to sit down and share some of the history that has made us a very special place here. It's called the Archives. And uh, we have volunteers at the South Central Kentucky Cultural Center who continue to spread the love of our local history in doing the research and coming up with these archive uh, items, not the least of which is Sam Terry, who knows a whole lot about history and a whole lot about where it's stored, too, Sam. And it's good to have you on the program to share some of these oh, things. Oh, it's sir. always a fun thing to be here. And we enjoy uh, hearing all the positive comment. And let's just see where we're going this year, because I'm this uh, week, because I have not snuck ahead. So this is going to be a surprise to me of some of these things that we're getting to unveil for this week. In, well, first of all, in 1924, 100 years ago today, here's the news. The following lime crushers are running now. Harrison Church's crusher at Goodnight, Esquire N.T. Owens' crusher at Beckton, and the Osborne Brothers' crusher at Lucas. Any farmer may buy ground lime at either crusher at reasonable prices. Any farmer who has lots of limestone on his farm and wants one of these crushers to come and grind it should come and see one of these men or the county agent. 500 pounds of ground lime to the acre will grow sweet clover, and two tons will grow alfalfa. Boy, that's a different day and time, isn't it? Certainly is. Talk about labor-intensive farming. It would be. Well, we are uh, certainly recycling our own nutrients there, crushing our own lime. Uh, and, but nonetheless, uh, I'm sure the uh, you can go get the machine, but I bet you had to provide a lot of the labor, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> In 1924. But... A good selling point, it'll grow uh, some sweet clover or some alfalfa, and that was worth having for sure. 1934, Sam, the Glasgow Times reports that a bill to license drivers of automobiles at a charge of $1 a year has been agreed to by a group of members of the House of Representatives. It was authoritatively learned last Wednesday. So I guess before 1934, we, uh, we didn't have any charge for having an automobile? Yeah, we didn't have a license. That's right. <laughs> hey, Dern, here's the government coming in again, a dollar for having a car. Uh, I'm kind of amazed if you imagine our world and we didn't have driver's <laughs> right. licenses. All the people who wouldn't have a job and uh, all the uh, things that uh, – wouldn't have a question associated with them today. I think that's very responsible journalism, too. It wasn't a bill from the House of Representatives. It was just a group of members of the House of Representatives. No real vote or anything. Just Nothing some, behind closed some doors. Some of the ones that they thought ought to happen. <laughs> 1944, we're in the war years, Sam, and that's where we learned that eight recruits from the U.S. Navy and three for the U.S. Army composed a selective service group, which left Barron County this week. Those in the Navy included Estel Craig, Henry H. Ferris, Jesse R. Hagen, Edward P. Hogan, Henry R. Lane, Akla J. Lawson, James T. Toll, Louis E. Tuey. The Army group consists of Edward Christie, Henry A. Tapscott, and Vernon P. Wells. Some excellent soldiers in there. I uh, happen to have known as a young child a couple of those folks. Mr. Estel Craig run a grocery store mm -hmm. right up the street from my house. And, of course, James Toll and uh, Vernon Wells, just good folks pausing to take care of their duty to their country. And their service is still appreciated. That's right. 1954, the news is a medical clinic opens. The Hayes Whiteside Clinic on East Main Street has been opened. Built by Dr. R.E. Hayes and Dr. George P. Whiteside, the building is located on East Main Street beyond the Broadway main traffic light. Now, the clinic, especially designed for two physicians, makes generous use of natural lighting. An ambulance entrance and duplex office styling are two of its most distinctive features. What about that? 1954, that building still exists, and there's still a Dr. Whiteside in that building. Indeed. Uh, and, of course, uh, that is uh, Dr. Will Whiteside, the son of Dr. George Philip Whiteside, Jr. And I guess he would be the Dr. Hayes' great-nephew. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's still in the family. We'll say it that way. It sure. is indeed. And it's a nice location and well used, I must say. 1964, the news is that uh, Leap Year Day Saturday, February 29th, brought twins for Mr. and Mrs. James Mullins. Kevin Wayne and Karen Elaine arrived at 7.50 a.m. on the leap day of 1964. 
a nice set of twins. And, you know, every so often <clears throat> when I go uh, out to uh, Annie's restaurant, I will catch Mr. James Mullins in there, who at one time operated that facility. Really? And, and I'll have to uh, go in and uh, talk to James about uh, the birth of his twins. Well, back I in bet he would uh, have some insights 1964. to share. <laughs> he, he hangs with a rough crowd in there, I'll tell you. <laughs> All nice fellas. 1974, Monroe County Judge Douglas Carter has named William Harlan, Mrs. Billy Bowen, James Russell, Mrs. Jack McClendon, and Joe Fred Butler Jr. to the Monroe County War Memorial Hospital Commission. Now, that was big news in 1974. Tompkinsville has a hospital, and the hospital has continued to grow and continued to serve. It certainly does. Now, I don't, they, don't, they still don't call it the War Memorial Hospital, do they? I can't remember. Uh, maybe it's like Monroe County Medical Center. I believe now, you're correct. Like but anyway, it was uh, several hospitals right here were named <laughs> War Memorial Hospitals. It was, but if you're a certain age, you probably still call it the That's War right, Memorial you probably Hospital. Do. Speaking of the right one. Uh, and here in 1984, guess what's in the archives in the Glasgow Times? Kevin Mullins and Karen Mullins Harlow celebrated their 20th birthdays February the 29th since they only celebrate once every four years. You know, the friends gather to make their day special. So we kind of we kind of celebrated that birthday twice here in the archives. Once the actual birthday and once on their twentieth birthdays. Nice memories. It was nineteen ninety four this day the Medcalf County Hornets won the sixteenth district tournament and the Caverna Colonels won the eighteenth district tournament. The Allen County Patriots were the fifteenth district winners. Tis the season. You know, we've got high is. school basketball going on in such exciting ball games. I've been keeping up with district tournaments and some cliff hangers as cliff hangers go uh, and uh, certainly which means the, the region is going to be equally as exciting coming up here sam terry we do love our basketball as we should 2004 this day in the barron county progress it was reported about brawa implementing a new spay neuter assistance program now of course brawa has made so many strides in the uh, treatment of animals, the rescue of animals around here, and this uh, the business of where they have the new spay and neuter assistance program uh, was one that uh, certainly made a difference, but yet it showed their commitment. Yes, it certainly has. That was in 2004. And 2014 in the Barron County Progress, we are celebrating National Sleep Week. National Sleep Week being celebrated by the T.J. Sampson Sleep Disorders Center. Of course, uh... There's a lot of things associated with Sleep Week, but this was in 2014, 10 years ago in the progress. There's also, uh, uh, it's interesting because this is uh, uh, Read Across America Week, uh, uh, instigated partially by the birthday back on Saturday of Dr. Seuss. Indeed. And uh, I'm going to be reading down at South Green today uh, a, a book entitled The Sleep Book. <laughs> Written by Dr. Seuss. Sounds I'm gonna very tell you, appropriate. I have pre-read it. It's a, it's, a, it's a great book. It really is. And I'm looking forward to that to celebrate Read Across America with a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of a sleep theme. Anyway, that's where we are in the archives. You can see that this is no sleepy little place. And certainly the people that celebrate our history do so with good reason because we have a lot of wonderful things. Thank you for your research and all of your all the assistance that you get from the folks down at the Cultural Center. We have a lot to be proud of, a lot to be thankful for, and a lot to celebrate. And uh, I think you need to take folks down there and see what you can learn this week, in fact, Sam. Uh, without a doubt, it's the place to be. You reckon we should reconvene tomorrow? I certainly do. History won't repeat itself, but the uniqueness of it will. So come back and join us tomorrow on the archives here on WCLU.